Hey everyone, Nick DeRobertis here teaching you financial modeling. And today we're going to be talking about structuring a complex Python model as part of our lecture series on going beyond an initial Python script, learning Python basics so that we can build out financial models using Python. So you know, we've been working so far um, on this simple retirement model and we expanded it to a more dynamic salary retirement model in Excel. Uh, but so far, as far as Python is concerned, all we've done is build out the most simplistic retirement model possible. Um, so we want to go to building the same uh, dynamic salary retirement model in Python as well. Uh, but in order to do that, we're going to have to learn a little bit more of the Python basics uh, before we can really just jump right into that um, so that we don't get bogged down trying to learn everything all at once. We can kind of learn the basic tools and then go and put together all those basic tools into the model that we're trying to build. Um, <clears throat> and then not only do we need to learn kind of, you know, the basic tools and, and you know, functions, data types, etc. in Python, we also need to learn about a structure that we can use for our model uh, that's going to make sense for someone that's coming to uh, read your model that, um, you know, they can expect, you know, the inputs to be in a certain place, outputs to be in a certain place, and there to be a kind of a structure to it that is logical. Um, so there's kind of, um, you know, two layers to how we can structure our models in Python. So there's structure within basic Python itself. Uh, we'll talk about how we can use functions to structure uh, pieces of logic into kind of logical units and put those together to build the model. Uh, but then also we're using Jupyter uh, on top of Python to build out the models in this class. So we can add additional structure to the model using Jupyter because Jupyter gives us that nicely formatted text we can basically create sections uh, with that text uh, to be able to differentiate the different parts of the model. So when we build out a more complex financial model, um, and this is you know, a general kind of structure that we're looking at here, it's not uh, specific to Python or Excel or any other tool, it's just kind of a logical structure we can use for our models. So you know, we've already talked about how you know, a model basically just takes the inputs and ultimately converts them to outputs. Um, and so up until now, we just kind of think, been thinking about the model as just this one block here without really thinking about how that model is broken down. Uh, but as we dug into the uh, Excel dynamic salary model, we found that really there were sub problems that we were solving inside the larger problem. And so we formed, uh, you know, sub models uh, to deal with those individual parts of the problem and putting them all together uh, made the entire model. And then we can keep breaking it down even further, you know, within each of those sub models, there were individual steps to uh, carry out that part of the sub model. So thinking about the dynamic salary model, uh, you know, we uh, ultimately our goal was to take uh, you know, things like the interest rate, the savings rate, uh, you know, the number of promotions, etc. Um, and convert that ultimately in a t into a time until retirement. And we broke that down into uh, three parts. Uh, one is to figure out the salaries over time. One is to figure out the wealth over time. And the last is to figure out the retirement details. Um, and so we split that down into three submodels, just like is shown in this picture. And then, you know, if we think about the um, salary uh, portion of the model, that salary submodel, uh, we split that down into steps even further from there. Uh, you know, we calculated the cost of living factor separately, we calculated the promotion factor separately, and we ultimately got the salaries over time based on combining those two things. So, um, you know, thinking of a model in this way is really helpful because 
you know, when you just go and you have some problem and you need to go and build a model for it, it can be very overwhelming on where do I even start on this thing? There's, you know, so much involved here. It's not clear to me how I get, you know, from the inputs to the ultimate solution. Well, you just got to start breaking it down um, and try to uh, work it into as many smaller sub problems as you can. And then it all of a sudden becomes so much easier to solve these small sub problems like, oh, how do I calculate this, you know, cost of living uh, adjustment factor? That's a much smaller problem than this entire thing as a whole. And so you can just take the small problems one at a time. Um, and that makes it easier to move forward on the model. Um, and then it's going to have a lot of benefits. Um, you know, as I've mentioned, people coming to read your model, they can understand how it's laid out very easily. And it becomes a lot easier to maintain the model going forward. Uh, you know, if someone needs to, uh, you know, work on your uh, salary portion of the model, um, you know, now saying, oh, well, there's going to be uh, recessions and whenever there's a recession, they're going to stop doing the cost of living raises. Say that was our assumption. Uh, then, you know, if you didn't have this structure, everything was just kind of all in one, then it would be not very clear where they would have to change things. And if it would be, you know, breaking other things when they change it. But if we've separated it to having the salary as its own sub model, then they can just work on the salary portion of the model and not worry about how it's affecting the other parts as long as the inputs and the outputs remain in the same structure from that sub model. So um, a lot of benefits to using this kind of structure. Uh, and so that's the structure we're going to follow in this class and I would recommend just in general for any financial model. Uh, and then applying that to Python, we'll see uh, more on the specifics as we, uh, you know, dig into all these basics and then we actually go to implement that in the model. Um, but basically, we can use functions to, you, to do this structure for us. Whereas in Excel, uh, you know, the model was the workbook, right? And then, you know, each sub-model was a worksheet and each step was basically like a column in one of the tables. Um, for Python, it's all about functions. So the entire model is going to be one single function. You should be able to call a function, give it your model inputs, and get your model output. Uh, but then each uh, sub-model is going to be its own function as well. So then your main uh, model function would basically just be calling each one of the sub-model functions. And then within each uh, sub-model function, you can have a function for each step in the model. So then uh, each of these sub-model functions is just calling each of the individual step functions to put it together. And each of these individual steps functions actually have the main logic of your model. And you can go to addi additional levels of nesting um, if it makes sense for your problem. You know, you have you can break each of these steps down into even smaller sub-steps. Um, and so on. Any number of layers is fine, um, but this kind of functions inside functions um, is a nice way to structure things in Python that, that gets at this same kind of logical structure for the model. So that's the basic idea behind structuring our Python models. And then, you know, you can also use Jupyter to have, you know, the nice, you know, section headers and say, you know, this is the salary portion of the model. And then it, you know, goes into all this part with the functions, etc. cetera. Um, so with these ideas, we'll make them a lot more concrete in the later lectures as we go to actually implement this. Um, but that's where we'll leave it now for how to structure our Python models. So we'll come back next time to get started into the Python uh, basics as far as the syntax and different uh, ways that we can work with Python. And we're going to be talking about conditionals in the next video. So thanks for listening and see you next time.